Hello and welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. Today we're going to be talking about a Sun Belt Conference Championship. Not unusual for sports fans around here, uh, but something a little bit different. And joining me today is Director of Athletics, Jeremy McLean, uh, to talk a little bit about the Sun Belt Conference Championship that's coming to football. Finally, for a lot of the, the sports fans out there that have been talking about this and wanting this for a while, uh, there's finally going to be a championship game making its way to the Sun Belt. Uh, obviously, how, how are you feeling at this point now the announcement's been made and, and it's coming to the conference? Yeah, we're excited about it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, you know, with the change in January with the NCAA regulations, it opened the door for us to have a, a more involved conversation on that, that football championship game. And so, Excited about what it means for us. I think uh, not only does it allow us to create a student athlete experience um, with a championship game, a true championship game uh, in football, like we do in other sports. Uh, so that's something to look forward to from a student athlete perspective. But also think nationally, just uh, branding the Sun Belt and, and you know, as a football conference, as a, as a football conference that, that's going to be taken seriously and, and uh, uh, with, with many good programs um, in that conference. And so I think we were, uh, us and the Big 12 were the two, the two conferences um, that had not uh, developed a championship game at this point. And both of us were in the same situation where we didn't quite have enough teams. Uh, so with the rule change, and the Big 12 made that announcement earlier um, about a week ago. And, and uh, we had had a lot of lengthy conversation over the past couple of months. And so excited about where we're at, excited about what it means to us as a conference. And of course, uh, now this has just now been public to us, but I know you guys have kind of known it's been going on for a little while. So what's the, I guess, kind of the feel that with, with, with Neil and, and the team and the players and the coaches about how they feel about now the potential in the future of getting to play in a conference championship game? Yeah, I think our guys are excited. I know mm -hmm. our coaching staff are excited about, you know, again, just, just kind of from a student athlete perspective, um, it, it's a goal. I mean, it's mm -hmm. something to shoot for. You, 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 you try to win, uh, get in that position to be one of those top two teams and, and uh, compete for a championship. So it's another kind of feather in the cap, if you will, an opportunity. And um, so, you know, and then, and then as, a, as an athletic director, of course, I start thinking about, um, you know, Veteran Memo Veterans Memorial Stadium being full on championship <laughs> week. And because, and, uh, you know, I think we're, we're headed in a uh, down a direction where, uh, it'll be hosted on campus, so okay. it'll be a unique opportunity for uh, for those schools to do that. And that and that's that does add an extra element for for I guess development and uh, revenue. Absolutely. is to be able to have that rotating uh, location. Now uh, this is 2018, uh, yeah. so we still got uh, two seasons that's before right. we see this come into play, uh, and there's still a lot of things in the works. But uh, let's talk a little about the the possible mechanisms uh, in which is going to take place for some of the the sports fans out there. How a champion is going to be picked. I know there's sure. there's two different options that they're looking into, and there's a possibilities. Explain about how that might yeah, work so, out for us. Uh, the new rule in, in January, the NCA mm -hmm. was passed um, through the NCA, uh, allowed for two avenues. Uh, in, in the past, you, you needed to have 12 teams um, and, and and two divisions, winner of each division. And so, uh, what the rule basically states now is is really there's no limit on the no, there's no minimum on the number of teams required. Um, but you you can do two things: either you play a round robin, a full round robin, everyone plays everyone within mm -hmm. your league. Uh, which for us would mean we'd play nine conference games, or uh, you have two divisions and you play a round robin within your division with the two winners facing each other in a championship game. And so, and so that's where we're headed. Mm -hmm. Those are the two options, either a round robin or, uh, of every team or two divisions with round robins within those divisions. And, of course, now we're, we're talking ten teams by the time this comes around because right. we're, we're adding Coastal Carolina into the system at that point. And, and so is it looking like uh, maybe ten teams is going to be kind of the cap for the Sun Belt at this point, and at least in the foreseeable future? I think so. Uh, you know, if you look over the past eight years or so, the conference really gone through a, a, a complete shift of, of makeup. Mm -hmm. um, teams that have left the conference and – uh, when we had our first round of really serious conference realignment. Um, and so over the next couple of years, what we'll see is Idaho and New Mexico State will no longer be affiliate members mm -hmm. after the 2017 season. And Coastal Carolina will be coming in uh, as an FBS member and joining the league. And so, uh, so like you said, in 2018 will be the first time we have 10 teams and I think we all feel like we're in a really solid place. And so I don't know that we can't predict, predict the future, yes. but I'm excited about the programs that are in our conference. Uh, again, talking about branding uh, those programs and, and the really, really good football that's being played. And so I think in 2018 with 10 teams, uh, the championship game coming into play, 
uh, I like where we're at with that, and I, and I think that's uh, that's the right path for us and uh, where we'll be in the foreseeable future. And of course, uh, you know, if I had to look into the the director of athletics crystal ball, I would think that po- the possibility of those two options you talked about earlier, the divisional one, may be the one that seems like maybe a little more attractive, especially for scheduling uh, and things of that sort. Is, is that something I think that you so. think so? I, you know, I think we'll there'll be a lot of conversation about mm-hmm. um, that. That gives you an option to play eight eight conference games yeah. where we are now. Uh, like I said, the, the round robin with, with the full 10 teams would mean playing nine conference games. So I think that'll be the big topic of discussion. Like you said, does, how does that affect scheduling? Um, so, you know, I know that that's to be determined, but, um, but you're right. Those are serious factors that'll, that'll uh, come into play. And of course, it, the, the, the added factor of, of being able to possibly host the championship as well right. uh, throws that into play. And obviously, it's going to get uh, you and your staff into possibility, some, some overtime work and getting that kind of thing scheduled. And, and here's hoping in December of 2018 that you guys are working overtime. Absolutely. So, we'll have no problem with that. No problem working <laughs> a little extra overtime. We want to see a championship game in the vet. So, Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, thanks for joining us and explaining how all this is going to work out and looking forward forward to a championship game in the Sun Belt here in the future. Thanks, Thanks Jeremy. Jeremy. Appreciate right. it. And thank you for joining us on today's edition of Trojan Talk.